not with the name, and they said, oh, can we do it, hurry up, because it's 48 hours, we need a name. Wow, really, 48 hours? Oh, that was a, oh, wow, that's, that's really No, crazy. only because it was a hot <laughs> item, right? Yeah. You know more about that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah actually, it was. Because it was, uh, it was a hot news thing. Right. And so, yeah. when, before it hit the, what do you call that, you know, the, social, the, the press, media, yeah, and all that. Right. They wanted to name it. Right, mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, it was um, uh, first the initial discovery um, telescope. So they they were the ones. So so and stars, uh, and stars. most likely uh, uh, looks at the sky, you know, repeatedly over you know mm -hmm. many many nights, taking the same image of the same place and then looking at differences between it. And they right. see something moving, yeah. and they say, oh, hey, we got something interesting here. Yeah. And they, uh -huh. and, and how they all you know work in synergy mm -hmm. um, right. and it's not like you know every telescope is the same so right. <laughs> and somebody was saying don't be surprised that there are many 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 more oh yeah uh what do you call those uh yeah. interstellar interstellar asteroids or, asteroids or, yeah out there right yeah so, yeah um, this is not going to be as rare as it seems yeah and the only reason you know we're seeing it now is just because you know we we have we're um, several different projects starting where they're just serving the entire night sky mm -hmm. repeatedly and so whereas that ability wasn't even possible like you know mm -hmm. uh, more than 10 years ago so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how different does it look from what we're what the artist yeah. comes up with from yeah, what no, you guys see in the time great, great question um <laughs> i mean the, so I'll, I'll i'll leave off by saying this is why we have um Artist renditions. Yeah. <laughs> it actually looks pretty, well, say, it must really, be actually boring. really boring because oh, okay. because so, so so the background is um, these were originally discovered in the seventies or sixties, can't remember, um, and they were named quasi stellar objects because um, quasi is like fake or similar mm -hmm. to an stellar yeah. star. So it was these objects that were similar to stars, but they definitely were not stars, and, and it took um, astronomers a little while. What to get all the most of our information, especially with this discovery, uh, we have to look at the spectrum. So we break that light up into, into mm -hmm. its rainbow constituents, and we can see certain uh, what we call um, emission lines, and we can identify that. Basically, tells us how far away in the universe it is. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, about 13 billion light years mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Now, as a side note, distances in astronomy is is is, is misleading because um, this universe is expanding. And so what do you take as the distance, you know, mm -hmm. the distance when the light left the object or when we see the object mm -hmm. or somewhere in between? And, and, you know, we actually have different definitions, you know, depending on what we're trying to, to show. So, um, but so, so we shortened the word quasi stellar object into quasar. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so it left the object 13 billion years ago. Uh, before the Earth was formed, before the sun was formed, mm -hmm. so a long, long time ago, and yeah. so uh, the farther away we look, um, the farther, uh, the longer it took that light to reach us. So, um, in a, in a sense, you know, uh, telescopes are time machines because the farther away we look, the, the you know earlier it had left the object. We're just slow in knowing that it existed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, you know, the light's been shining at us for yeah. however long. Mm. And so the actual distance was was precisely determined using radio data from um, uh, data kind of a large millimeter array uh, in South America. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we you know, they already had an idea of roughly how far away it was, mm -hmm. even with the telescopes here. Um, so anyway, I want to talk about the object, I guess, is um, so. so um, Actually, can we pause before we talk about the object? <laughs> and what we focused on was um, looking at the Kumulipo and um, a Hawaiian worldview and looking at our creation. And so, um, looking at the Kumulipo, we found that, <clears throat> uh, you know, the similarities between what Hawaiians believed as creation and what science tells us that creation was. Um, science and Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian language, they're usually viewed as two separate disciplines. But if we remove that division, that um, divider, um, where so um, we're able to see that there are far more connections than there are differences between the two. And so it was really an amazing um, experience being able to learn about this quasar and then the dwarf planet that we also looked at. Um, and then learning the background uh, information 
about it, like you shared with us. <laughs> and so I was at our workshop last summer. Uh, you know, we had all this introduction first from our traditional uh, documentation through our Po'i Honua, which are our creation chants of the universe, our Hawaiian universe. And this is from our people from way before us. So the amazing thing, one of the amazing documentation of uh, what's online. We, take, we went online, went to the Mayas, uh, China, Ojibwe, China mm -hmm. and other places and just checked out how they were generally. And with the Hawaiian, there were some few things on the so-called, the name of one of them, the, the most epic. This occurred where we divided up, I think there were about 22 of our participants, students, and into four groups. And uh, they just brainstormed, you know, that there was towards the end of the five days, I think it was the last day, Yeah, the last day. And we had a special committee that said, we're going to uh, not just for the naming, uh, which was a part of the assignments that were uh, specifically given to our students. But when it came to the naming, um, uh, we I, and, and our people were always in person. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So it's like a mini rehearsal. Yeah, this yeah. is a mini rehearsal. Yeah, we have to watch our time too. Right. You have a Zoom meeting? Yeah. I forgot that I had that. Yeah, <laughs> you guys can keep talking. It's okay. <laughs> um, I think for for everyone for when we do the interviews, uh, how do you pronounce the name correctly? If I just said it, you know, together, for you are Emma. Okay. Pretty much, Kumu Kalahapa always the same because I just do this. Oh no, you're fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's such a long name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see this Po, the new, and the Ya mm -hmm. because I said it those four words and then Emma is a word itself. Ah, okay. And the breakdown, literally, Po is the other. Right. Like uh, Po, right? Yeah. Maybe you should get a shot. Can you get a few shots with your foot? Sure. That's a shot. With that. Yeah. Oh, they come to the word? I'm very curious about that. I think I'm going to say this thing. Yeah. 